it's it's definitely for me at least something there that is very you know uh, potent. I don't know what to call it, but <laughs> well, this is what happens when something is transcending. It's been made purposely, like great art, to bypass the rational center, mm -hmm. which is all, all a lot of reasons why people will not like The Prisoner or other movies like that. <clears throat> you know, McGowan is a person who knows how to bracket your conscious mind. He's dealing with archetypal symbolism mm, yeah. that, you know, has a humongously hypnotic and brilliant effect on your unconscious mind. And that's what, you know, stays with you as a child. You know, very much the Doctor Who series, anything that Terry Nation, the great Terry Nation made, mm. uh, again, will do this, you know. And there are, of course, modern examples of this, but nothing quite as good in my mind as these earlier series that were made mm. in the 60s and 70s. Mm. And it, they work on a ver the template that they're using, the, the sort of the... Um, artist palette that these people are drawing on is of an archetypal nature. Yeah. And that is why they will last for eternity, you know. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Man knows that he is a prisoner. Patrick McGowan never, rarely did every, any interviews on the prisoner series. He refused to really talk about it. Mm -hmm. But in one of the very few, um, very, very few, uh, you know, interviews that he did, he basically just said a couple of lines. He basically said to this journalist, look, when you're in traffic in a car and you can't move forward and you can't move back, aren't you a prisoner? You know, yeah. because that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. So basically, okay, man is a prisoner. Yeah. You know, if he, if you're not in, 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 at work at the right time, you're fired. <laughs> you know, so I mean, you are a prisoner. Yeah. Face it. We're prisoners on, on multiple levels. I mean, we are, yeah. as you say, we're corporeal, uh, corporeal beings. We are, you know, in, in the flesh. We can't escape that. Undoubtedly. Mm. And the whole prisoner series, you know, just to make it very clear for people who may not be familiar with it, is a very elaborate, highly detailed, highly symbolic analysis of all those multidimensional ways that we are enslaved, both religiously, politically, psychologically, you know, all ending in this fabulous ending episode, which is completely befuddled, even prisoner critics, people are just befuddled about what is the meaning of the final episodes, and, you know, of course, it's absolutely tremendous, I, I adore the last episode, mm -hmm. and have very, very, spe you know, ide very specific ideas about what he's talking about there. But again, these things should be watched in sort. First of all, they should just be watched as pure entertainment or beauty. You know, yeah, sure. People shouldn't try to start analyzing it right away. You know, they should just try to absorb absorb what the man is saying, and then slowly let it digest, pass through your own consciousness, and then come up with your own conclusions. Mm -hmm. So you know, yeah, that's what I believe. I, I totally agree. Yeah. But yeah, you were talking about Superman Returns. Mm, yeah. I, I yeah. did uh, check that out. I mean, this was a two hundred dollar, two hundred million dollar flop. <laughs> in my in my eyes, hmm. you know, a terrible movie. I think that the first movies were far better. Hmm. You know, I really like the third, you know, uh, Superman movie. Hmm. I just think they were really well made, and I also like the fact that you know um, Lex Luthor was played by Gene Hackman. Yeah, sure. Who really added some brilliant, brilliant aspects to that character? Hmm. Because I often believe that the anti-hero is, if not as important, even more important than the hero, mm. even in Hollywood movies where the, you know, the hero is the main deal. Mm, yeah. And, you know, the new actors are just horrible. I mean, it's absolutely horrible. They're <laughs> useless, totally, you know. And by the way, it's pretty much just a remake. It's, it's sort of like a, a very lackluster remake of, of, the, of the old films. Uh, yeah. You know, hardly any elements, just pure fantasy into reality uh, uh, nonsense, you know. So I uh, do not recommend people watch that film. Not that they should take my advice, but... Okay, how about the intro though? Isn't this? I thought that that would kind of, uh, kind of elaborated a few, you know, a, b a bit further on the on the concept or the idea of. I mean, I got this really, uh, you know, Nephilim type deal that this is kind of a serpent race. I remember, you know, they they took the the uh, the images of. Um, Oh my God! I can't believe I don't remember his name. What's what's the guy called? Brando, Marlon Brando at the beginning. Yeah. Um, they took the the old footage from from this guy, and you know, I I really got the kind of a serpent theme going there. What, what's your take on that? Oh beginning? yeah, I mean, there's no there's no doubt about it that the whole series of Superman taken as a franchise is very much based on these powerful ancient archetypal motifs. Mm -hmm. they've, just, they've just re moved the blocks around a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in the pieces of the jigsaw which is what great art should do. It should take the same archetypal things and never should present it to you in exactly the same way. Mm, yeah. So the story of Superman is brilliant. Just like the story of Batman or Spider-Man, yeah, these sure. stories are, are magnificent. Sure, sure. Yeah. So the telling of, of the story in this latest movie I don't think was that hot. You know, it was very lackluster, and it really appealed to this masculinized mindset, you know, um,
which I don't like. But the fact of the S, I mean, there's many, many, many ways you can write the letter S. Mm. And the mm. Superman has, S has been definitely noted to be, you know, both solar and serpentine. Yeah, yeah. No doubt about that. It looks like a cobra. You know, the colors red and blue are Freemasonic. <laughs> yeah. You know, out and out Freemasonic. The concept of the Superman is also a very Freemasonic uh, archetypal yeah. idea, sure. which was picked up by, you know, Leonardo da Vinci and others. Mm. We talk about man, uberman, you know, the idea that man has a super destiny, yeah. you know, to conquer evil and, and all of these kinds of things. Mm. And the, the beautiful part about it, you know, of course, the whole idea of crystal technology. Yeah, sure. And the power of the crystal is brought out very strongly in, in the movies, you know, uh, and was originally. Mm. But, you know, I'm just, um, I don't know, there's, I think that the, the previous movies worked a lot better. You know, even the contrast, the, the, whole, the whole Superman idea is the contradiction between the Clark Kent nerd, mm-hmm. you know, wearing his specs mm-hmm. and being sort of this nerd, and the Superman idea. Sure. But that's good drama, you know, that, that's a really interesting set of conflict. Yeah. And the female, of course, who's this projector par excellence, you know, what's mm-hmm. her name in the, in the film, you know, Lois Lane. Lois Lane, yeah. Who doesn't see anything at all in front of her, you know. Mm-hmm. She can't even discern that the Clark Kent is the same as Superman. This is all about projection. Yeah. <laughs> You know, if, if, if it's powerful, it must be fantastic. You know, this is uh, picked up a lot, you know, in, in, that, you know, the female is, is basically projecting her own animus, her own king, mm. on Superman, as the whole collective can do. Yeah. The collective does that. So this tie-in with the, you know, the mind of the lower female who doesn't understand and who is utterly, you know, mesmerized by the fact that this animus concept exists. You know, and then of course doesn't honor it within herself. She's projecting it onto onto Superman. You know, hmm. yeah. And he's only of use because he runs around solving crime and saving people from hideous death. You know, and fighting evil. You know, all of these sort of very cliché types of things. Sure. That's why he's he's important. You know. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, that, that that's a f- kind of fascinating concept in 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 one sense that this idea of of Hollywood because often. You know that many of these movies has has this you know multi contextual contents going on there, and uh, oh, yeah. and often you know people who I think that don't are uh, you know into f- I mean often in in that sense it's a bit dirty uh, almost you know to kind of like Hollywood movies, but again these are people who aren't you know symbol literate and, and can see the multiple levels in these movies because on Definitely. one level it's totally as you say ridiculous, but it's there's so much more behind all of this. So. <laughs> well, look at look at the Da Vinci Code. Look at uh, you know National Treasure, mm. which is a movie I highly recommend everyone to see. Brilliant movies, tight, mm. edgy, not a wasted scene, no mm. bullshit dialogue. Mm. You know, if you watch if you watch National Treasure just as a movie making exercise, mm. it's a phenomenal film. Mm. Fantastic dialogue. You know, it's not the usual. I mean, Hollywood's so full of wise acre, idiotic, stupid sidelines and super stupid, stupid quips. Mm. You know, utterly trashy uh, dialogue, bad scripts. You know, and then they come out. You know, the, the same so-called you know Hollywood. So again, you're dealing with a whole spectrum of different kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is a very powerful leviathan down there. Yeah. Who could make intensely brilliant films? Yeah. You know that are like National Treasure and and The Da Vinci Code that work cinematically as as fantastic films. You know, especially Hellboy and things like this. Mm. This is a new art form, just in the same way that music. Songs have changed, not can change people's lives, but have changed people's lives. Yeah, yeah. So are movies things that will change people's lives. Absolutely. You know, you see people, you saw people reading the Da Vinci book, didn't you, even before the movie came out and certainly after the movie? Mm-hmm. You know, that's a very important thing to, to realize. Yeah. Whether you like the movie or not, people who saw the movie went, you know, I want to read that book, or they were reading the book, and then they maybe want to read more about the Templars, you know, yeah, exactly. and they want to read the second book, or they want to go back and read even the Holy Blood and the Holy Grail. Yeah. Suddenly they're into something that they were never into before. Exactly. You know, this is, this is remarkable. You know, the fact that you can get these, I mean, obviously, if the content is brilliant in the movie as well, that is excellent. And in the case of these movies like Da Vinci Code and the National Treasure, the content is fantastic. And it does reach the, the whole world. And it does get people interested in some of the most fascinating subjects. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's an, it's a modern art form in the same way that, you know, Da Vinci and these people and Michelangelo and Rembrandt were painters. Well, now you've got movies which incorporate music, they incorporate drama, they incorporate art, yeah. you know, and subliminals and so many other levels. People should never, ever forget that and never take it for granted. You know, one thing came to mind here. I mean, it, it's so obvious, I mean, in that sense that we have been going through, you know, 
our earlier periods in history going through these different elements just as you say we have been working with you know I imagery painting and so forth uh, mainly you know d during the renaissance in that sense and then of course before that and af after afterwards also of course you know writing developing that the, th the theater and so forth but now we have because we haven't done movies uh, historic historically speaking or modern history at least uh, been doing movies for that long so i mean mm -hmm. This is like our, you know, we are actually incorporating all of the previous, you know, uh, art forms and actually drawing them, as you say, into one form here now. And that's why, and that's why people should not feel fed up if there is a sort of, a, you know, a lot of them that are rubbish. We're in the early, early stages. It's what I say a lot about even, you know, the conspiracy movement. Yeah. Don't get pessimistic. Stay optimistic. This is the information that's only coming to light. The new technology, which I connect with the age of Aquarius and the you know, age of Pisces, this Neptunian uh, Uranian energy that movies uh, are based on mm -hmm. uh, from an astrological point of view is very new and it's happening because we have greater stories to tell than even the ones that were in the past. Mm -hmm. In the past, you did, people's consciousness didn't tell, didn't know about the universe as we know it right now. So yeah. their drama took on a different form. Right now, we have a different message yeah. to, to speak of or the muse working through people wants a particular you know, medium to represent a far, far more intricate story because you know of our frontal lobe development and the kind of understanding and the omni-directional, you know, plastic way that people now view the world. That we're much more objective. We're less enslaved by religion. Yeah. We have a, a higher quota of freedom and thought. Not, not everybody, of course, granted, but you know, <laughs> yeah. we have it. Yeah. And so the media of movies is representing that. The yeah. manipulation you see of images and the digital digitization. This all has a very spiritual theme behind it. Yeah. <laughs> because you know you can't tell certain stories. You know, and, and look at Lord of the Rings. You think in a million years they ever could have made that into a decent, you know, production before? Impossible. Mm. You know, your imagination w would have done it. Yeah. But now we have a medium that is a much greater mirror to the imagination, and I, I'm all for it. Yeah, me too, absolutely. And it's it's interesting that they kind of, you know, we have been uh, developing this CG, computer uh, graphics and all of this, and and finally, I mean, it it looks really good now nowadays too. I mean... <laughs> It's amazing what they've done with the Lord of the Rings, uh, the series there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, by the way, if we are, one thing I will say about Lord of the Rings is do not watch anything except the full unedited director's cut, you know, yeah. whatever they call it, you know, the, uh, the uncut version, the, you know, the collector's item, with it, and get the one that has the appendices. Yeah. Those you know, because you're not seeing the same movie if you watch the other stuff that they release on TV. Yeah. Or that's just down at the local, you know, uh, your video store, mm. try to make the extra effort to get the full, you know, Peter Jackson cut with the appendices, yeah. and then you're really seeing the movie because there's key scenes in that that must be seen. Yeah. Some of them absolutely phenomenal. <laughs> you know, it makes a greater sense of the movie. Absolutely. Totally agree. Yeah, so um, do you want to move on in the list? Well, yeah, The Omen, I see, was on the list. I, mm -hmm. Let's not spend a lot of time on that because the remake of The Omen is basically rubbish. I, I would like to say that it's actually a slur on the original movies because when you do a remake, I'm not really a fan of any remakes. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say that when you make a remake, it's almost a slur on the previous actors and the previous, you know, movie who, who did... I mean, how could you beat Gregory Peck, hmm. you know, in the original movie? Mm -hmm. Or David Warden, you see, or, you know, Leo McKern and, and these people. They've already acted in the movie. They've given their whole, you know, energy and passion to a a brilliant, brilliant story. I love the Omen stories. I think they're fantastically, you know, if you wrote, read those in a book, mm -hmm. they're excellent. You know, even uh, Sam Neill, his portrayals in the, in the follow-up movies, which I really like. Mm -hmm. you know, these are very, very well done movies. What on earth would possess somebody to go and do an absolute scene-by-scene, -scene, lackluster remake <laughs> with a kid that you'd think that, the, you know, the, the casting director just whistled out the window and, go, and went, hey, kid, you want to be in our movie? Hey, we're making a movie. You know, <laughs> ride the scooter around and we'll film you. Yeah, yeah. It's so pathetic, this new actor and, and uh, all the people involved mm. in, in the new movie. Really horrible, really. Mm -hmm. Not an interesting film, you know, uh, but I do recommend people to see the original films. I like those films. I think the stories are, are strong. Mm. Uh, not that I believe in the religion part of it, of course, but, you know, uh, the symbolism is it's a very symbolically rich series of films. You know, sure. there's a lot to think about. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Particularly the third in the series where Damien is killed, you know. Mm-hmm. 